can't sleep? Don't want to sleep? Afraid to sleep? Are the windows closed? Are your doors locked? Did you check your closet? And under your bed? Maybe you should keep a light on in the hallway, just in case. Now settle in. Make yourself comfortable. Lay back. Close your eyes. And let me tell you a story. You find a mole on your skin, one you hadn't noticed before. You don't pay it much mind. Moles happen. Some people call them beauty marks. Then a thick dark hair starts growing from it. You get worried. Check with your doctor who tells you it's nothing to fret about. It happens all the time. But what if it's not just a mole? What if it's something else? Something that is more than skin deep. Nevis by Dick Silver Scoot thought it was funny that they called Old Man Finster Old Man Finster. It's not like the moniker differentiated him from the hundred other geriatric patients at the care home. Everyone was an old man or old woman. According to his chart, he was over 123 years old, but he likely wasn't that ancient. No one knew his actual birthday, so the default date of January 1st, 1900 was entered into his records. Somebody had tried to get him listed in the Guinness Book, but they turned him down since his true age and even his identity couldn't be verified. Most people thought his records were lost during the war. Which war, one couldn't say. If it was World War I, then he was likely at least a hundred. If it was the Great War, well, then he'd probably be under the century mark, but still old as hell. Scoot brought old man Finster his dinner. The man had no teeth and refused to wear dentures, so everything on his plate was soft. Mashed potatoes, carrot puree, and what was described as liver and onions, a disgusting gray mound covered in brown gravy. For dessert... There was a custard cup. Give me my food, you little twit, old man Finster demanded, reaching out with bony hands toward the orderly. Scoot took the tray off the rack, placed it on the bed table, and adjusted it so it was as close to the old codger as possible. Old man Finster snatched the plastic spoon with an arthritic paw and started shoveling the food into his mouth as quickly as his old bones and flaccid muscles would allow. The sight of it sickened Scoot. The other residents of the home ate like civilized people, or allowed you to place food in their mouths for them to chew slowly and thoroughly and then swallow. Sometimes a bit would leak out from the corner of their mouths, but a quick swipe from a napkin took care of that. Old man Finster, however, ate like a famished animal, scooping the potatoes and carrots and mushed liver in great gobs to his toothless maw. Not all the food made it inside. Some fell off the spoon onto the bed while it was speeding from the plate to his face. Other bits landed on his head and neck and even in his hair. But what really disgusted Scoot was the mole on the man's right cheek, a few centimeters below the purplish bags under his eye. It was the size of a button, almost perfectly round, and the color of feces. To make it even more repulsive, there was a long, thick, black hair growing out from its center. As the old-timer gummed his food and his jaws worked furiously to maneuver the blended fare to the back of his throat to be swallowed, that bristle sprouting from the mole seemed to wag at Scoot. Scoot couldn't take it anymore. He turned away. He wanted to leave, to flee down the hall and throw up the remains of his own dinner that were now dancing threateningly in his stomach. But if he left now, that would only make things worse. There was a routine old man Finster followed, and if Scoot left before he finished, he would scream bloody murder, shout so loud and woeful they would be heard throughout the facility. It wasn't worth getting reprimanded by his supervisor. Best to endure the culinary carnage now, rather than face the music later. Once the geezer scraped his plate clean, he reached for the custard cup 
and tried to peel off the foil lid with his twisted fingers. Open it, he demanded, thrusting the cup at Scoot. Scoot turned back toward the bodach, took the cup, and peeled back the lid. Old man Finster didn't bother with the spoon. He smashed the plastic container against his mouth and squeezed out the contents. His white, mottled tongue reached out to lick clean the remnants of the custard. When he could extract no more of the sweet paste, he threw the cup at Scoot. More, he demanded. Bring me more. Scoot reached into his pocket and pulled out a second custard cup. He had taken off another resident's tray. He peeled back the lid and handed it to the greedy old coot, who voraciously sucked down its contents. More! Old Man Fester screamed. I need more! Sorry, that's all I have. More! I'm not even supposed to give you any extra. You have a very specific diet. The nutritionist makes sure you get everything you need, and more! Old Man Finster screamed, but his voice was getting weaker. More, he said again, this time feebly, then in a whisper. More! The old codger's eyes closed, and his head lolled to the side, in what looked to scoot like an incredibly uncomfortable angle. The mole faced him, and its hair pointed accusingly in his direction. Scoot moved the table aside, grabbed a towel, and gently wiped away the food from old man Finster's face, neck, and hair as best he could without waking him. He was careful to avoid touching the mole or the lone whisker issuing from the dark, coarse flesh. A shiver traversed his spine, causing his whole body to shake in revulsion. Scoot returned the tray to the rack and left the room as one last sound pushed its way out from between old man Finster's lips. More. It was dark, but enough moonlight leaked in from the window for Scoot and Lenny to sneak into Old Man Finster's room. They approached the old coot from opposite sides of the bed. Lenny peered at the mole on the man's face. That's it? he asked. That's the Nevis? Shh, Scoot warned. It's a mole. Right, Scoot's friend answered in a low voice. Nevis is the medical name for a benign mole. How do you know it's benign? Because he's not dead. Lenny leaned in closer, studying the Nevis's hair. I don't see it moving, he whispered. I said it looks like it's moving when he eats. Lenny reached up and turned on the light fixture above the head of the bed. Turn that off, Scoot ordered in a hushed voice. Why, he's out cold, Lenny replied abandoning caution and speaking at a normal volume. Scoot looked down at old man Finster. He appeared dead. His breathing was shallow, but Scoot could see the alleged supercentenarian's pulse through the paper-thin skin on his neck. Okay, that's pretty gross, Lenny conceded. Imagine having to look at it every day. So cut it off. No way, I'm not touching it. Lenny rolled his eyes. Don't be a wimp. The orderly pulled out a pair of bandage scissors from a pocket in his scrubs. He reached out and pinched one end of the hair between his fingers, holding it taut while the blades of the scissors closed in. Don't, Scoot warned. Lenny looked at his friend and smiled just before he closed the handles of the scissors. Only instead of hearing the satisfying snip he was expecting, the hair tugged out of his grasp. He turned his attention to the scissors and saw that the hair, rather than being severed, was squeezed between the blades. What the heck? Lenny asked. He opened the scissors and tried cutting it again. The hair resisted the blades, as if made of metal itself. Lenny took the scissors and tested them against the hairs on his arm. The blades sliced cleanly and easily through them. You got a razor? No, I don't got a razor, Scoot replied. Come on, let's go. Listen, man, if we slice the thing off, it won't be there to freak you out every day. And if you feel guilty about it, just let it grow back. He's not going to know the difference. Scoot shook his head. Come on, check that drawer. He must use something to shave. The orderly reluctantly opened the drawer in the short dresser next to the bed, where the staff kept things that were needed for the resident's care. Scoot sorted through the items scattered inside, then pulled out a handle the size of a large pocket knife with a curved piece of metal hanging out from one side. Perfect, Lenny said 
snatching the straight razor out of Scoot's hands. He pushed on the steel loop until the blade emerged from the handle, swinging on its pivot. The blade looked sharp. It looked deadly. Don't! Lenny scraped the gleaming metal along his arm, leaving a bare strip of skin behind. Diabolical! Don't do it, Scoot begged. You'll thank me later. Lenny touched the razor to Old Man Finster's face, a few millimeters from the mole, then dragged it across his wizened epidermis. But when it reached the hair, it caught. It refused to slice through the coarse bristle. Then the hair moved. Lenny jumped back. Holy crap, it moved. Did you see that? He lifted the blade away. The hair clearly wiggled. What is it? Just let it go, Scoot said, reaching up to turn off the light. Lenny stopped him. You have a clamp? Len, let's just get out of here. Give me your damn clamp. Scoot stared at his friend for a moment, then reached into a pocket of his own scrubs and pulled out the small tool that looked like a pair of scissors with plier tips on the end and ratchets on the handle to hold it in place. Lenny held out his hand, and Scoot slapped the clamp onto his palm as if they were in surgery. He grabbed the end of the hair between the jaws. The ratchet clicked as Lenny squeezed it as tight as he could. Hold this, he said, directing the handle of the clamp toward Scoot. I don't want to. You want me to slice open the old geezer's face? Lenny asked, brandishing the razor in his other hand. Scoot took the clamp and held it above the nevis. Stretch it out. The hair became taut, causing the nevis to tent. Then he placed the edge of the razor against the base of the hair and made a slicing motion. Only the sharpened steel didn't slice anything. What the hell? Hold on to that as tight as you can, Lenny ordered. Scoot gripped the clamp with both hands. Lenny pressed the blade against the black hair, pushing, trying to force the razor through it. But all he succeeded in doing was pulling out the hair the Nevis grew from. You're going to wake him up. Lenny ignored Scoot's warning and gripped the back side of the razor by both ends and pulled with all his might. The nevis stretched, extruding from Old Man Finster's face in a skinny cone that had to be nearly five centimeters long. Stop! Scoot almost shouted. Lenny paused. When the pressure was removed, the extruded nevis remained poking out of the codger's furrowed face. More! The old man muttered in his undisturbed sleep. What did you do? Scoot asked in a panic. Put it back. How? Lenny asked, perplexed. He leaned down to inspect the growth. It seemed to undulate slightly. He took the clamp from Scoot and continued pulling on it. What are you doing? Get your phone out. Film this. Are you crazy? Film it. This is going to go viral. Lenny stared hard at his friend until Scoot relented under the pressure, took out his phone, and turned on its camera. You got it? Zoom in. I got it. Lenny continued pulling. The nevis kept growing. When he looked closer, he could see that the dark patch of skin wasn't just stretching. It was emerging, as if he was pulling it through a buttonhole. This is bad. This is awesome. After a few more seconds, the nevis was as big as a pointy finger. Lenny kept pulling. Now it was the size of a carrot. Where is it coming from? Lenny wondered. We are so fired. Can't stop now, Lenny proclaimed, then pulled some more. As the nevis issued forth, it started getting wider, ballooning around the small circle of flesh it was being pulled out through. More, old man Finster groaned. Lenny paused, but the old coot was still out cold. We should call someone, Scoot suggested. Lenny ignored him and kept on pulling on the hair, revealing more and more of the nevis. It now sat on old man Finster's face like a giant turnip. Then a tiny nub on the side of the growth squeezed out of the hole, and another one opposite the first. They pushed against the old timer's face, causing more of the nevis to emerge on its own. Lenny let go of the handles of the clamp, watching as the growth, now the size of a grapefruit, started wriggling its way out of old man Finster's head. Are you getting this? Lenny asked. Scoot nodded nervously. 
We really should call someone. We will, Lenny assured his friend. Let's just see what happens. The nevis kept extruding, like an octopus squeezing itself through a keyhole. More nubs appeared, each pair larger than the last. Now it was the size of an eggplant. Only the end with the hair was long and tapered, waving in the air. Lenny reached out to touch it. Don't! I just want to see what it feels like, Lenny promised. His finger made contact with the brown flesh. It looked like it had the texture of a medium-grit sandpaper, but it was smooth and soft to his touch. He poked his finger into it. It was like pressing into one of those gel-filled stress balls. The tapered end coiled like a cobra preparing to strike, then shot out and wrapped itself around Lenny's wrist. Whoa, Lenny said, surprised. That's tight. The pressure grew stronger until the skin of Lenny's arm and hand between the coils of the nevis whitened as it deprived them of blood. Get it off, Lenny cried. Help me, help me get it off. Scoot dropped his phone and ran around to the other side of the bed and tried to pry the nevis off Lenny's arm. But its grip was too tight. The razor, Lenny shouted. Use the razor. Scoot picked up the blade from where Lenny had left it on the side of Old Man Finster's bed. He studied the nevis, trying to find the best place to cut it. Just cut it off! Scoot placed the edge at the spot where the nevis's tentacle first touched Lenny's arm. He pressed down, but instead of cutting, the blade only made a depression. He sawed at the nevis, trying to break through the leathery flesh. But the blade would not cut. Give me that, Lenny demanded. He snatched the straight razor out of Scoot's hand and began hacking at the tentacle. The blade just bounced off. Lenny became more aggressive, but that only made his aim worse. And as he swung the blade down, it glanced off the epidermis of the nevis and sliced into Lenny's own flesh. The cut was so deep that if the tentacle wasn't acting as a tourniquet, the orderly would have bled out. I'm going for help. No, don't leave me. You have to do something. What? Lenny assessed the situation. We have to finish pulling it out. Are you crazy? Grab my arm. We both pull. Lenny lifted one foot onto the bed and placed it in the crook of Old Man Finster's neck so he could exert maximum force. Ready? Scoot nodded, grabbing Lenny's upper arm with both hands. One, two, three, pull! They yanked straining against the seemingly supernatural strength of the nevis. As they did so, more of the nevis slid out of the hole in Old Man Finster's face. It was now nearly a meter long. Where was it coming from? Pull, Lenny begged. Scoot reset his feet and pushed back while he held tight to Lenny's arm. Two meters. More, Old Man Finster murmured from under the ever-expanding nevis. The creature was starting to look like a giant leech. There were clear annuli segmenting its body, with those little nubs protruding in two lines down its length. Lenny screamed. The tentacle crushed his arm and wrapped around his hand as well, squeezing it into a pulpy mess. The trapped blood burst through the thin tissue under his fingernails. God, make it stop! Scoot pulled harder. The two of them fell back. Scoot cracked his head against the floor and Lenny landed on top of him. He tried to slide out from under his friend, but he seemed incredibly heavy. Scoot wriggled until he could get his arms between himself and Lenny so he could push the orderly off. He pulled his legs free, then shakily got to his feet. What the holy hell? Lenny screamed. The nevis was now completely outside of Old Man Finster. It was at least twice as big as its host. The other end had a mouth. There were no eyes that Scoot could see, but it seemed to sense the two men and issued a low, hissing sound as its mouth widened from a circle the size of a large coin to one big enough to swallow a small animal. Kill it! Lenny shouted. Kill it! But what? I don't know, just get it off me! Scoot looked around. He grabbed a heavy wooden chair and swung at the nevis. The chair bounced off the creature, but got its attention. The head shot out, extending itself so fast, 
Scoot didn't even see its mouth grab the chair and snatch it out of his hands. But he did see the monster rear back to throw the chair back at Scoot. Scoot ducked just in time. The chair bounced off the wall and into the hallway, breaking into pieces. If it had hit him, he'd be dead right now. Help! Lenny said, his voice weakening. Scoot didn't know what to do. The nevis turned its attention to the orderly in its grasp. Its mouth widened, big enough to swallow a basketball. It snapped toward Lenny's head, engulfing it and clamping down. Scoot felt bile rising from his stomach. Lenny! But there was nothing he could do. Nothing but save himself. Scoot backed out of the room. He tripped over the remnants of the chair and crashed to the floor. His wrist snapped when he fell on it awkwardly, and pain erupted in his arm. He couldn't think about that now. The agony was swallowed by fear. He scrambled to his feet and ran. Ran down the hall, into the lobby, and out the front door. He ran and ran and ran. Honey stopped struggling. The nevis had effectively suffocated him when it swallowed the orderly's head. Once the body was limp, it uncoiled its tentacle-like tail from around his arm and opened its mouth wide enough to encompass first one shoulder, then the next. The little nubs along its body pushed it forward as it continued swallowing money, like a snake engorging itself on its prey. It reached his waist, then his knees. As the nevis' mouth slid over Lenny's feet, one of his shoes slipped off. The nevis lay on the ground, heaving for a moment. Then it rose up, like a curious prairie dog. It climbed up onto the bed. Its blind head searched for, then found the point of its egress from old man Finster's body. The mouth narrowed, and the nubs on either side of it probed the hole in the man's cheek, working their way inside, then pulling its enormous girth through the impossibly small opening, segment by segment nub by nub, until it was just a tail sticking out. And then the tail squished back down, trailing the thick black hair at its tip, flattening to seal itself back within its host's body. The clamp still dangled from the single hair in the center of the nevis. Old Man Finster sighed, then grinned. Enough, he whispered, satisfied at last. Enough. Thank you for listening to Nevis, written for the Bedtime Stories for Insomniac's Fiction podcast by Dick Silver. Dick would like us to mention that his original story has been edited to remove some profanity, and if you want to read the original text, he'll be posting it soon on his own website. Dick is working on his debut novel. The only thing he'll tell us about it is that its title is Homunculus. Follow him on Twitter at Dick Silver Books. In the meantime, Please subscribe, rate, review, and share these stories with anyone who enjoys audiobooks. Stop by bedtimestories.studio and sign up for our snooze letter to be notified of new episodes and exclusive offers and get a free bookmark. You can visit richhostick.com to learn more about the host of Bedtime Stories for Insomniacs. Thanks again, and all the very best.